The protests also speak to understanding this emerging generation. This emerging generation wants to give their lives to something. They want to have a cause to live for. And also the impact of social media on this generation. And so as parents, we've got to realize this big conflict's going on. It's dominating all of the social media feeds and, and news. It's everywhere our kids are going. They're hearing it in school. And what they're hearing is heavily lopsided against Israel. And they're influenced, very impactful by social media. And they want to give their lives to something. All of that makes a recipe for a very dangerous situation. And you say, well, why is it that big a deal? Again, because every page of Scripture is set in Israel. Our children are leaving the faith in droves. As a result. Oh, I got got a pause here. We're going live right now. How can we raise our kids to stand firm, have a faith that lasts, and navigate such a time as this? Capital has just been to turn the nation, you have to take the next generation. Today in the news, COVID-19 numbers. I'm Jake McCandless, and this is my podcast, Stand Firm Parents. We're working together to help our children have a faith that lasts. And now, here's Jake McCandless. Welcome back to another episode of Stand Firm Parents. I'm your host, Jake McCandless. And today we're having a conversation that is extremely important, but I'm not sure we realize just how important it is. It's something that we're seeing all around us. The media is covering 24-7, yet in light of parenthood and raising our children and raising our children up in the Lord, we don't talk about it. And I think it's a big part, maybe actually one of the bigger parts impacting the future of our children's faith. That's a, that's a lot to say, right? I mean, that's, that's a bold claim. And when I get to the subject, you're gonna be like, ah, I, I don't know, Jake, I'm not sure. But I encourage you to lean in and to listen to this. We're talking about our children's faith and the question of Israel. Uh-oh, Jake, you're going political on us. It's more than politics, right? I mean, nearly every page of the Bible mentions something in relationship to Israel, to Jews. It is the setting of the Bible. The conflict in Israel since October 7th has been everywhere you look, hasn't it? Dominating the news, dominating your social media feeds, just everywhere. And who knows, by the time you're listening to this, what has happened and what else is in the news concerning Israel? But since Hamas attacked Israel on October 7th, it has been in the news, it's been everywhere you look. Our children have heard it, regardless of their age. If they're able to hear, they've heard it. If you've had TV on, if you've had, if there's been conversations, they've heard it. A big part of the news cycle, whether it's on TV, the radio, our social media feeds, is the protests that have been happening on college campuses across America. Not just protest, but actually violence towards Jewish students. And most all of those protests have been very lopsided in support of, they would say, Palestine. I'm not going to use that other than expla- explaining that because we need to recognize it was the Hamas terrorist group who was in power in Gaza who led the initial attacks. Again, by the time you're hearing this, who knows what has happened. But the support has been seen heavily towards the Palestinian side, Hamas, the terrorist side, which is absolutely bizarre, absolutely crazy. I mean, protests were happening immediately in support of Hamas, who committed these horrific crimes, who attacked Israel, yet the news media coverage is in support of Hamas and the chants from the river to the sea, they all shall be free. Now, as I dug in this, trying to just try to understand what's happening on the college campuses, you have to realize it's not as big as the media makes it out to be. It's hard to find true numbers because everyone's trying to prove their point. One statistic said only one in 10 college students participate or even care. I think that's probably a valid point. But of that one out of 10, 
46% is in support of Hamas. And you would say, well, that means the majority of, for Israel, no. <laughs> the largest percentage is that 46%. And I was thinking, I, I, you know, according to the news coverage, it would seem like it'd be higher than that. But when you think about it, this is a terrorist group, and it's got that much support on American college campuses. This is crazy. And so as we're raising our children and sending them into college, and it's not just colleges. This is happening in high schools. Again, not as large as the media makes it out to be, but it's there, and it's heavily lopsided towards Hamas and against Israel, and probably just period against Israel. The protests also speak to understanding this emerging generation. This emerging generation wants to give their lives to something. They want to have a cause to live for. And also the impact of social media on this generation. And so as parents, we've got to realize this big conflict's going on. It's dominating all of the social media feeds and, and news. It's everywhere our kids are going. They're hearing it in school. And what they're hearing is heavily lopsided against Israel. And they're influenced, very impactful by social media. And they want to give their lives to something. All of that makes a recipe for a very dangerous situation. And you say, well, why is it that big a deal? Again, because every page of Scripture is set in Israel. It's a very big conversation, and I had planned in later episodes to really deal with this, get in the weeds of this Israel conflict and the biblical foundation for that. It's something dear to my heart, dear to San Firm. But I had the opportunity to visit with Daphne Kirk and Andrew Kirk of Generation to Generation who were in Israel and I just had to jump on this opportunity to get their story out there. And I was just going to do one episode about it. Now it's turning into four, and so I'm talking about it here. You will hear their interview coming up. And I have a great conversation with Charlotte of Stand with Israel coming up. She's one of the leading voices talking on college campuses, really has a pulse of what's going on. And then I'm hoping, we haven't recorded it yet, but I hope my girls, my daughters, are going to come in and in the studio, and we're going to talk about their experience going to Israel, and what they think on it. And so you can hear directly from some in this generation. But it's a huge conversation, and we're just going to scratch the surface of it. Because when you dive in this conversation, there's a lot to talk about. When you talk about this, it really there's so much to be talked about. You need to get into the humanity of this on both sides. You need to talk about what is this current conflict and how did we get here. Talk about the politics. No one wants to. But that's part of the conversation. Then getting into doctrine and theology and how does Israel fit in the Bible and, and relate to the church today. Then, of course, getting into eschatology and talk about the end times. But what I really want to focus our conversation on today is how the subject of Israel, the current conflict, conflicts in the future, will impact the faith and the view of Scripture of our children. Let me say that again. This is a big subject. This current conflict, the world's view on Israel, your child's view, is going to greatly impact their faith. They're holding on to their faith and just their overall view of Scripture. Again, I share just how big this is. But parents, we have to realize just how big this is. Israel's not just some country that's out there. Again, it's the setting of the Bible. Nearly the whole Old Testament, except for the years in Egypt and in Babylon and Persia, but you still get insight into Israel and is still dealing with Jews in that period. The setting of the Gospels and the first of Acts. Then it comes down to Jesus. He's a Jew. The first disciples, Jews. Paul was a Jew. The setting of the Bible of the past. The setting of the end of the age. And the age to come are all centered on Israel. This is a big deal. I think it could be easy to kind of write this off and say, it can't really be that big a deal. Jake, you're talking about our children's faith and their future and following Christ hinges in some way on how they relate to this Israel conflict. I am saying that. And it's scriptural. Check out these verses. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 12, verse 2. The Lord says through the prophet Zechariah, I am going to make Jerusalem a cup that sends all the surrounding people reeling. 
are staggering. Judah will be besieged as well as Jerusalem. On that day when all the nations of the earth are gathered against her, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock of all the nations. All who try to move it will injure themselves. So verse 2 talks about making Jerusalem, Israel, a cup that gets the world drunk. And could there be a better explanation of how this relatively small conflict set the world on fire and it's continued to do so? I don't think a better picture could be written. I mean, this is coming from, you know, nearly 2,500 years ago. This is being said. It's incredible. And then goes on to say, I'm going to make Jerusalem a, a immovable rock, that the nations are going to get hurt as they try to move it. Uh, this is said a few times in Scripture. I'm not sure if it's in this passage or in other ones, but it's the idea here. Basically, Jerusalem is going to give everyone hemorrhoids who tries to move it. And then in Psalm 2, it talks about the nations raging against Jerusalem. So if this is how Scripture describes the world as it's coming, winding down at the end of the age, wherever we are in relationship to that, but if the world is going to hinge, is going to become unhinged probably, basically, over Israel, then that affects our children too. And so, yeah, and this is a serious subject. As I said earlier, there's so many facets to this conversation, so many things that need to be said. But I, I want to get to just how important this is for our children and how much hinges on this and talk directly towards that. But first, I want to make sure we understand the current conflict. And then I want to touch just a little bit on the biblical foundation of Israel before we get into that. But please stick in here. Let me talk directly to you about how big a deal this is and what needs to be done about that. But in this current conflict, we have to understand Hamas is a terrorist organization. I'd love by the time you're hearing this, there is no more Hamas to deal with. Gaza, a nation that voted Hamas in power. Israel had given the land that they pulled themselves out of the land there in Gaza. And then the people voted Hamas into power. Tons of money was pumped into Gaza, enough that could have been the next Dubai instead. It becomes just a place filled of terror, ready to attack. Their goal in their charter is to annihilate Israel, that there will be no more Jews in the land. That chant from the river to the sea, I, I know as it's being chanted on college campuses and on streets and in America, the idea that people think they're talking about freedom. But that's not. The heart within Hamas is, that means genocide. We have to understand what's going on. Hamas made the attack. Hamas planned it. I had the chance to be there in February after the attacks in October. In one place, we're just less than a mile at a kibbutz, a, a, basically like a small town, a neighborhood there that was attacked. And we're at the back fence of that. There's a field, and then you see Gaza there, and we're there with a survivor who, for nearly two days, him and his wife took cover in their bomb shelter. For 12 hours, he held the door handle as Hamas was on the other side. And he talked about how uh, the Israeli government had allowed Gaza people to come over and to work. He had worked side by side with several of these men how that they would bring kids over from Gaza and do things with them. Yet the whole time they were coming to work and bringing their kids, they were mapping out the kibbutz. It was a horrendous attack. Had the chance to be at that music festival where that happened. Just see the marker after marker where these young people died, where they ran and tried to find cover. Walked down the road where car after car had been burned. I mean, this was very real and it was a terrorist attack. We have to understand that. And we need to understand the reality that there are over 20 Arab nations. There's only one Jewish state. And within that Jewish state, you have Arabs, Muslim Arabs, and Jews, and people of all walks of life living side by side. We have to understand the facts of this current conflict. I want to just make that disclaimer. I think it's also important that we understand God has a continued plan for Israel. And again, I know we're coming from all different backgrounds and when it comes to views on the end times and maybe even views of how Israel relates to the church. 
But I believe it's very important to realize the church did not replace Israel. And if that's something you're questioning, I'm going to do an episode on this in the future, but I encourage you to check into Romans 11. Romans 11 walks through this and says very clearly what's going on. It talks about the church, the Gentile church being grafted into Israel. And God still has so much still planned for the nation of Israel. The bulk of prophecy deals with Israel. God's not done. God has this continued plan. And again, I know we may all have different views of the end times, but any futuristic view, if you believe this stuff is still yet to come, then there's no doubt that as you begin to explain your view, Jerusalem, Israel's going to come up in there somewhere. God's not done. There's still plans. There's still things that are going to happen. But when you walk through the passages that talk about the deception that's going to come at the end, that deception is usually coupled with something that's happening within Israel. And I share that just to begin to help you understand, if, if you've not been tracking with this, just how big a deal this is for our kids. It's a big deal. If we're talking about end-time deception being connected with Israel, and that's the thing we don't want for our children, right, is for them to be deceived. Okay, so I said I want to talk directly about how this impacts our children's faith. And it's not a stretch. I shared those passages in Zechariah, Psalm 2. You can find them elsewhere in Scripture. Israel is that stumbling block, and that's not going to change. Author Mark Twain had a very interesting thing to say about Israel and about the Jews. He talked about the Jews being really a proof that God exists. And I want to read a pretty lengthy quote that he wrote in regard to the Jews. Mark Twain, if statistics are right, the Jews constitute but 1% of the human race. It suggests a nebulous dim puff of stardust lost in the blaze of the Milky Way. Properly, the Jew ought hardly to be heard of, but he is heard of, has always been heard of. He is a prominent part on the planet as many other people, and his commercial importance is extravagantly out of proportion to the smallness of his bulk. His contribution to the world's list of great names in literature, science, art, music, finance, medicine, and learning are also a way out of proportion to the weakness of his numbers. He has made a marvelous fight in this world in all the ages and has done it with his hands tied behind his back. He could be in vain of himself and be accused for it. The Egyptian, the Babylonian, the Persian rose, filled the planet with sound and splendor, then faded to dream and passed away. The Greek, the Roman followed and made a vast noise and they are gone. Other people have sprung up and held their torch high for a time, but it burned out. They sit in twilight now or have vanished. The Jew saw them all, beat them all, and is now what he always was, exhibiting no decadence, no infirmities of age, no weakening of his parts, no slowing of his energies, no dulling of his alerts, and aggressive mind. All things are mortal but the Jew. All other forces passes, but he remains. What a powerful quote, and so true. History shows the world has been out to destroy Israel, the Jews. And they've persevered. I believe proof of God, proof of his word. And not just persevered, but been prominent, continually prominent. I mean, it's crazy that the world would be ablaze right now. I mean, the Gaza Strip is just a very small area. Israel itself is extremely small. Yet, it consumes the world. So what consumes the world trickles down and impacts our children. But it's not just it's a world, I mean, even if this is just a world event, it's going to impact them. But it's not just a world event. Again, Israel is the setting of Scripture. Jesus, not just a Jew, but the promised Jewish Messiah. As he hung there on the cross, they wrote above him, King of the Jews. Yeah, they, they meant that in jest, but that's truly what the Messiah is. When we say Christ, Christ is, means is Greek for anointed one. The Hebrew equivalent is Messiah, which means anointed one. Jesus was the promised Messiah to Israel. He still is. This issue is so central. So if our children do not understand Israel's connection today to that of the past, one, they're missing one of the major proofs of God. 
one, the story of scriptures disconnected, but it also makes them discount the word, scripture. I mean, the scripture could have power that it's rising up, being fulfilled right before our eyes. But instead, if we do not connect today's Israel, even today's conflict, it really leaves our children discounting the power that could be in the word. If we say Israel, Jews do not matter today in terms of God's promises or that the church has replaced them, however we phrase that, whatever we do, or we, we talk about, you know, conflict, the conflict today or Israel today, you know, in no way connected to the past, then the Bible becomes irrelevant. It becomes just symbolic. We make all of that stuff in the Old Testament. All the mentions of Israel, of Jews, and God's promises to Israel and to Abraham and his descendants, all, all of that makes it all just symbolic or maybe antiquated. We have a chance as, as parents to bring our children into this all-encompassing story that's unfolding even right now. If we discount the Israel today and the connection to the scriptures, maybe it makes the Bible lie to them. And that's also how we regard Israel today. If we make Israel out to be the evil one. Now, we need to be honest. I think we need to realize when it comes to Israel and, their, and the Lord, they're not in that right relationship. That's what things are building towards. But if we just push Israel off as evil, then it's going to bring confusion towards God and towards Scripture. Now, in a lot of ways, it's not fair. I'm just stating the problems here. <laughs> and I want to deal with some solutions in the future. I want to give you some biblical foundation for how to understand God's continued plan for Israel, how the, the relationship with the church in Israel. I've got content there on our website, StanfordMinistries.com. I do events called Truth on Israel, where I do that very thing. I talk about the biblical foundation we should have for Israel. But I think it's easy to see, okay, this is something going on in the news. And, and likely, if you're listening to this, you have a heart for Israel. I mean, you, you know, track with God's promise to Abraham, if you bless my people, you'll be blessed. If you curse my people, you'll be cursed. You pro probably believe along those lines. You're supportive of Israel. You're pro-Israel. But yet, maybe you've not made the connection for our kids. I'm going to tell you, this is an important subject. And I believe a lot hinges on this. One, we have a great opportunity to show just how big, truly big, Scripture is. How God's continuing to work. But it's also an opportunity not to discount what God's doing as well. Again, there's more content on our website, StanfordMinistries.com. I'd love to hear from you. We'll be talking some more about Israel in upcoming episodes and in the future. But I really hope that you will put this matter to prayer. See the opportunity. See the pitfalls that could happen. And begin to have these conversations with your children. I mean, it's incredible that we can have a conversation of something that's happening in the news and then begin to connect that back to the story of Scripture. You've been listening to Stand Firm Parents. Stand Firm Parents is a production of Stand Firm Ministries in partnership with LifeWord Studios, created by Jake McCandless and Brandon Harrington of Dime Collective. Again, thank you for listening, and be sure to subscribe, share, and most importantly, stand firm.